So it's not that AI is going to replace us as agents, but the real estate agents who use AI will replace those who don't. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. So it's time to get on board or move to another industry, right? Mm -hmm. And it, we don't have to be high technologically advanced to figure these things out. They're very simple. Just take one and start implementing it and you nailed it. We have the thing you've all been waiting for, I've been waiting for, the Ladies rock star Panel. Come on up, ladies. Moderated by the beautiful and talented Andrea Syracuse, who will introduce all of her panelists. Come on up, ladies. Hello, welcome to PropTech South. How are all of you today? I'm so excited to be joined on stage by all these women superstars in the real estate industry. Um, I am Andrea Syracuse. I am the director of comms for Triangle MLS. And we are gonna be discussing today all about the huge technology changes coming to real estate and how that's going to impact our brokers and agents in a positive way. And we're also going to be recapping our thoughts and our takeaways from today's speakers. But before we dive in, I would love to introduce our panelists and starting with Lucy. So go ahead, Lucy, please introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Lucy Fortier. I'm the Executive Vice President of MLS Solutions at Black Knight. Recently joined the team to lead uh, the team that delivers Paragon to MLSs across the United States and Canada. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My name is Chanel Hart Dupree. I'm with EXP Realty and local here in Chapel Hill and Pittsburgh. And I met y'all this morning, Amy Gore, CEO of Presto Team Consulting and also acting CEO of RE Distribute. I'm Gretchen Coley, founder and team leader of the Coley Group. Awesome, so let's get started. I wanna first talk about there's been so much conversations about AI. So of course that has to be the first question we are gonna ask. And how will AI change the way agents and brokers interact with clients? You want to yeah, Let me go start. for it. What exciting times we're in, right? <laughs> um, it's so exciting to see so many changes coming um, into our business that we can actually leverage in our business. Mm -hmm. Like usually we see things that are kind of high level that our brokerages can use or institutional folks can use, but we don't always get it at our desk where we can utilize it. I think AI is going to change everything about the way that we do business. It will never ever replace the human element, right? It can never be us, even no matter how much information we feed it, it can never have that personal touch. However, it can make every aspect of our business way more efficient from note taking to analyzing photographs, to writing descriptions, to um, educating consumers on lifestyle, analyzation of data that we spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure out, it can do in four minutes. So um, I am very excited to explore, and I think this is a time you know, of where we need to really lean in and learn and figure out you know, what ways can we adapt pieces. There's so many out there right now, like this is moving at light speed, right? ChatGPT was a year ago, um, and now there's infinite companies that do that specialize in different aspects of AI and um, I feel like at next year when we're sitting here again we're going to be having a completely different conversation but I think from an efficiency standpoint AI is going to give all of us every single person in the room who's willing to learn an opportunity to do more business in a more efficient way yeah, I think efficiency is definitely the biggest value prop for AI. Like if you're not thinking that it's going to, make, going, to, going to make your day more productive, then you're thinking about it the wrong way. But we talked also this morning about leveling the playing field and yeah. some concerns about that. And I would say that it's not only going to level the playing field in the agent space, but your consumers mm -hmm. who also yeah. have access to data mm -hmm. and some of these AI tools are going to be coming to the table mm -hmm. very informed. Um, mm -hmm. about things that they used to not have access to. And so for me, I think the biggest push on the agent and broker side is really figuring out your value prop. Mm -hmm. You are the experts in the room. So AI isn't going to replace the hours at the negotiating table, the hearing the stories yeah. about the single mom who doesn't have credit 
All of those things that you're hearing and doing on a day-to-day -day basis, that's the value you bring to the table. You're going to have to double down on whatever your value is, and that's what's going to make you the expert in the consumer eyes. You yeah. nailed it, because it's not that AI is going to replace us as agents, but the real estate agents who use AI will replace those who don't. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is a fact. So it's time to get on board or move to another industry, right? Mm -hmm. And it, we don't have to be high technologically advanced to figure these things out. Mm -hmm. They're very simple. Just take one and start implementing it, and you nailed it. How many times do you have, you know, you walk into a grocery store, everybody knows you're a realtor, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where you go. What's going on in the market? Yeah. They want to know. Well, a lot of them already know more mm -hmm. than you, some of us do, right? Mm -hmm. And so as AI continues, consumers are going to have more data, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you're saying. So it's time to get on board so we can really take a lot of our, our tools that we do day, day in and day out. You know, how much time it takes per transaction. Mm -hmm. We use AI to help elevate what we do in a shorter period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the key. Absolutely. No more MLS books. I totally agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what they all said. That's my answer. Uh, no, I, I agree. And I think from a, you know, coming from a technology background um, like Lucy for us, it's doing the same thing for us, right? It's making our jobs more efficient. Mm -hmm. We're using it today in our QA process that used to be, you know, people. It's not that those people lost their jobs. We're able to use them for higher, mm -hmm. you know, more valuable use. And I think that directly translates in real estate as well. I also think there's one really interesting component about AI that I have not heard yet today, and it's possible I stepped out of the room for a second, but there's an interesting component to AI when you think about it being used to start to drive better decisions that benefit consumers Absolutely. without bias. Absolutely. It's been proven sort of over and over and over that we're all people. We all walk around with our own set of biases, both positive and negative, and we use those biases in our daily decisions. Mm -hmm. When you're powering solutions with good data and good intelligence, you can remove some of that Absolutely. bias. And so when you think about you know, automated valuations, AVMs in our business and how they become more and more accurate, we will reach a point where an AVM is accurate enough that a bank can look at it and say, this does not need an appraisal. Mm -hmm. That buyer qualifies, right? Yeah. Wow. Marry the two together, faster, less expensive um, items for the consumer, uh, faster closing for you all. And so I think, you know, when we talk about embracing it, there will be things happening around you that maybe you're not necessarily using in your daily business, but that are benefiting your business every single day. Amy, you said you've already been using it. Are there any challenges you've run into? Oh, of course. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Could you talk about Tell some us, of those please. challenges? <laughs> Listen, I'm the generalist at our organization, so thank goodness. Our, I see uh, an old developer that I'm working with living in the second row over here, so anything I say is going to be wrong. But, but um, listen, there's absolute challenges with it. Uh, it still has to be monitored by humans. Mm -hmm. We still find, you know, exceptions that we, you know, our assumptions and our biases that we applied when we implemented it, um, you know, proved to not be true. So there's, there's certainly challenges with it. Mm -hmm. But for us as a very small company, 15 engineers and, and product <laughs> folks, um, trying to build nationwide scale um, on a data solution, we couldn't do what we're doing without just trusting that it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. The piece that I love the most is finishing my emails for me. You know, you yeah. start the sentence and it's like, that's exactly what I want to say. Like, you know, yeah, and period, done. Right. Um, but the problem, the challenge really is keeping that personal touch, yeah. right? So we don't all sound like the same yeah. AI engine that we're all using. And how do we bring our personality and you know, what we bring to the table individually, our individual brands to everything that we do yeah. in such an AI world mm -hmm. with so many shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Right, and there are so many changes that are impacting already with technology. How will that really change real estate in the next five to 10 years? Maybe I'll jump on that one. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, you know, so we focus a lot on technology in these real estate conversations. Um, but we're not a technology industry. We're a technology-enabled industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, the most interesting piece that I heard touch on today and is going to carry into the next few years is the data ownership rights mm -hmm. and the licensing. Where does it go? What is the unknown impact? 
Um, the FTC is looking at AI because there is concern at the FTC level about unfair competition. How do we prevent the Zillows, the dot loops, from taking the wealth of information they have and skewing the playing field in such a way that they're cutting everybody else out? Mm -hmm. So that is the, for me, at least the five-year landscape is yeah. what's going to happen on that front. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, we, we talked this morning a little bit about, you know, sort of my image of, of, you know, SaaS and kind of data moving all these places. But I always think of real estate, to Lucy's point, more as service and software as a service, right? Mm -hmm. It's never just going to be software or yeah. tech that's going to drive this business. And so I, you know, encourage everyone to think of yeah. us as SSAAS, right? <laughs> so, service and software um, combined are going to be what really drives our business. Do we face some challenges? Certainly, we, I mean, we're facing some regulatory challenges right now. I think I would encourage every agent in this room to think about how you communicate to consumers what your value proposition is as agents um, and really focus on that service aspect that mm -hmm. negotiating aspect when i think about and i mentioned this morning my mom's you know an agent so of course i always have a realtor thankfully mm -hmm. um, but but when i think about she's my trusted advisor right mm -hmm. she's the thing i don't believe the bank or the appraiser or the inspector or anyone as much as i believe her her, right? She's my trusted advisor. And so I just really encourage you, technology can enable all of that, but it can't replace that, mm -hmm. that feet on the street, we meet at the door, we open mm -hmm. the door and decide if it smells like cat pee or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Digitize that. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how are we going to better serve our clients in a shorter period of time with higher quality? That's what we're always wondering. That's what we're always thinking. How do we leverage our time to better serve our clients? And I think that if we utilize AI and everything mm -hmm. that it has brought to the table and will continue to bring to the table, it's going to be a very important part of what we do. Mm -hmm. It definitely takes the step up. It takes you from um, being a level here to, to mm -hmm. several steps up um, by enabling you to be way more involved in the process, have a way better level of understanding, keep better notes, do all of those things mm -hmm. like that really make the process seamless for a consumer. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have open houses in five to 10 years? And you know, you're not driving your buyers around anymore. <laughs> right. And um, that would be awesome also. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about technology and I would love to hear from each of you, what is one tech hack that is gold to you in your business that you've either learned today or something that you've implemented in your business um, in the past that we can all learn from. I mean, I want to hear Gretchen's because she literally has a videographer following her around. Right now, so. That's my tech hack yeah. <laughs> is video everything, right? Yeah. Because um, and it, it kind of always has, but there's been so many nuggets that have come out of today. One of the biggest things that's come out for me is making sure that we're always doing the things that have worked all the time, right? The phone calls, the emails, and being able to automate that process in a personalized way so that we're not the one pressing send every time on a text message or on an email and our clients are, know that, feel like they are top of mind to us. But video has is, is been the thing that I've leveraged the most um, because it creates opportunities for us not to have the redundancy of having to explain the exact same thing over and over and over and also create be, be proactive in our approach and be able to make sure that everybody understands where they are in time and space and we've really leveraged video to do that whether it's from prospecting from handling clients that are already in our system to um, handling clients that you know we are three months out nine months out six months out after they've already bought a home from us to be able to make sure that we're staying in front of them so that they know that we continue to have value even after the transaction is closed like we say on our team the real relationship begins after you close because we want lifetime clients we want to be a part of that 46 percent that jimmy mackin set up here that uses the same agent over and over and over and you know we come to the table with so many more tools than just the transaction right so for us, it's being able to use 
all of the AI platforms, and obviously BARD is a big one, ChatGPT is a big one, those are the, the big heavy hitters, to be able to craft informational data about lifestyle and how mm -hmm. you live, because that's really what people buy, and being able to serve that up in a way that is efficient for us through video, through um, you know automated processes and campaigns that happen after the sale, which I think is more important than attracting the first customer. We are in the lead gen business. We got to always be in the lead gen business. But, you know, having AI write your ads for you is a pretty sweet thing. <laughs> um, and, and, and that's something that we're using a lot we'll because today, right. you set your buyer personas or your seller personas up, you do it one time and you spend some time doing that. And then you say, okay, this house fits this type of person. Take buyer persona A and write a Facebook ad dedicated to buyer persona A. 10 seconds. Done. Buyer. Yeah. yeah, and it it's works. A, it's a great, it works. Yeah, so so it. it's, it's yeah. not one thing, it's yeah. all of those things mm -hmm. and how they fit together. And I'm, I'm so excited about piecing the puzzle together, mm -hmm. right? And I learn something new every day. And I'm learning from you guys as well. Right. So. I totally agree. I will fully admit I'm probably, I won't say the lowest tech, but I'm, I, I like technology, but I'm, when you have it for a 25 year career, you get a little over some of the toys mm -hmm. and bells and whistles. And so for me, I really try to focus on what works for me, not just trying to chase uh, the next shiny object. And I will tell you, I set a goal for myself in 2023 to read two books a month mm -hmm. because I'd sort of gotten away from reading because who has time to read, right? None of us have time to read anymore. So I would say my hack for this year, just for me personally, has been audiobooks, Audible, have a subscription to Audible um, or audiobooks or something because y'all spend time in your car. Mm -hmm. That's downtime. You don't need, to, and you can save on Sirius Radio if you don't. You know, sorry, Sirius. What are you reading? <laughs> you do tell what your last two favorite books were. Uh, I will ad fully admit that I'm. Uh, it's a uh, fiction and a nonfiction, okay. and so uh, just just finished. Um, oh Lord, help me with the title to this. Um, Copperhead Demon. Uh, Barbara King Solver is one of my favorites. Mm, <laughs> um, so just finished that uh, really, really, really great book. Um, and I do not remember the last business book I read. I'll get out my phone here at the, <laughs> the break and, and report back to you all. But, but I just encourage you to sort of, you know, dig in. I, same thing with podcasts. I really love to mm -hmm. listen to the industry mm. podcasts. But who has time? Y'all have, there are 150 really good prop tech, real estate related podcasts. You don't have time to read them all. I'll put one in when I'm going to bed. It's sort of my Triangles downtime. is great. Triangles is really, really good. <laughs> I'll put one in when I'm walking my dog. I'll put one in. I happen to live sort of in the middle of nowhere in the summertime on a beautiful lake. So I have to drive a little bit to get to the store. I put one in when I'm driving to the store. So just, you know, kind of think of that gap time and how you fill it up with things that you really want to do that you think you don't have time to do. I love that. Mm -hmm. So a few things I've been really diving into, and I'm the most technologically challenged agent you will ever meet. Kelly's like, yes, she is. <laughs> uh, the first one I love is called Opus Clip, if you all are familiar with it. It essentially takes a long video I make, you drop it into Opus Clip, and it creates multiple short videos for you. It is amazing. So I'm okay at doing video, but I'm difficult. It's hard for me to edit and figure all that out. It can be overwhelming. Tactic. It's another one, T-A-C-T-I-Q. Uh, that essentially takes notes for you and creates summary and agenda when you're on a video conferencing call. So imagine you're doing a buyer consult yeah. or you're doing a listing mm -hmm. on Zoom. And instead of you writing and talking and writing and talking or trying to remember when you got off or watching the recording mm -hmm. again, once you're done with it, Tactic mm -hmm. will send something to you and your client saying exactly what I need to do and what I've asked of my clients. Mm -hmm. So that has been yeah. amazing. Really great. So amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Last one is durable.co. It essentially will create a website for you in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. You go and you say, I'd like uh, my website to look like this. I want it to have this content. I may want this page and this page and this page. 30 seconds, mm -hmm. it's done. So I mm -hmm. encourage you, if those are things that speak to you, check mm -hmm. them out. They've been great for me. I haven't seen tactic, but I, that is the thing. I, I'm terrible at note taking. Right? So oh hard. my gosh, I'm terrible. We use Otter. Yes. And what a breath of fresh air to be able to copy and paste and put it right into the CRM and do yeah. the task list. And someone was telling me, I think it was Chris Tam telling me last night that there is also a system that already does that. Incredible. That, yeah. 
So we well, and how good do you look to your clients, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have to use that extra brain power mm -hmm. to figure out exactly what you need to do and what they need to do, and maybe your admin or someone else done for you. Mm -hmm. That's how AI works for you. Mm -hmm. My hack is a personal hack, um, and <laughs> I'm going to admit it took me a long time. I've had an Apple Watch for five years. Um, a lot of us do. I used it as a fitness tracker. I wanted to know how many steps I was taking, what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, the best hack really has been diving in to figure out how to voice mm -hmm. activate everything on my watch so that mm -hmm. I can call people, yeah. text people, do all of the things that I need to do without holding my phone, right. mm -hmm. without being distracted. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it's become a really kind of easy part of my day to just like, hey, see, your oh, I better not say it because I'm going to lie to everybody still. <laughs> Read that last email from Ben Grabowski. <laughs> I'm going to have to pick your brain on that because Siri doesn't understand Southern for me. <laughs> but, you know, we often have these tools, and we see this even in the MLS. Mm. There's so many tools at our disposal, but sometimes it takes time mm -hmm. to really dig in to figure out what it is that's going to make your day faster, mm -hmm. easier, mm -hmm. all the things that you're doing more convenient. It's made me a lot more productive. Yeah. yeah. I think you really keyed in on one thing, too, about these little devices we're all packing in our pockets that are like super, super computers now, is the distraction that they yeah. become. How many times do you pick up your phone to think, I'm going to call my client or whoever, and then, oh, well, just Click on or you click take on. your phone out yeah. and you're, and you're like, why yeah. did I take this out? I, it's just like a reflex, yeah. like, you know. Seven yeah. text messages that you don't need to read yeah. right now, right? And so there is a lot of efficiency from mm -hmm. these. If you just discipline yourself mm -hmm. to, to your point to set up the voice commands and things, you can be very efficient because you're not looking at the screen or even your MacBook that's, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. sort of full mm -hmm. of all kinds of distractions. Mm -hmm. I love all these tech hacks. <laughs> um, we have time for one more question, but I would love to know what will you be changing in 2024 with your technology and processes? Do yeah. again. I'm interested in Gretchen's answer. I mean, we're changing everything. Like, I mean, we're doing it one thing at a time. But as you said, right now we're learning. Like, we're we're learning. I'm I'm helping my entire team learn and understand and I'm leaning in because there are so many options and really, you know, there are so many steps in our process. How do we, how do we make each step more efficient with technology, whether it's insights, you know, homes.com, whatever, there's all kinds of pieces that we can utilize in our business. And we're trying to figure that out for every single employee on our team and give our agents the tools and educate them on how to use them so that they are more efficient. Because those are the, the places where I think it's so exciting right now to really be in real estate and in this market that we're in um, and have all of these tools at our disposal. So we're going to change every aspect of how we do business and over the next 12 to 24 months. and. Um, we're and we're already doing it from the marketing perspective from video videography and scripting to how we present our listings to how we write the ads for those listings to how we write our letters and our 15 email campaigns like that piece is already done now it's the custom consumer facing interactions that we're really trying to get down um, throughout our entire team yeah I think for me, it's more just making sure I'm checking myself to evaluate whether or not I, I really solved the problem yeah. I think I've solved just because I've checked it from my list, right? And so we used to think of things like, well, I've licensed a solution for that. It's working. I'm done. I never have to look at that again. I think we're in a time right now where you have to evaluate those Everything. things sort of quarterly mm -hmm. at a minimum, maybe monthly in some cases for solutions that are easily moved in and out. But, but I think this idea that we're going to commit you know, sort of very, very long term to this massive infrastructure um, of tech and not be flexible mm -hmm. about changing it is where I've had to challenge myself as a tech leader. Day-to-day mm -hmm. -day tools, I mean, you know, usually the developers are going to let me yeah. know what we're doing next. <laughs> so what I, I what think is your my process? team and I, oh, sorry. sorry, 
What is your process? Are you looking at things every single month? Or are you looking every 90 days? I'm just curious to know from you. We're from looking on behalf of clients every week, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we represent a lot of clients who are trying to solve problems. So we, we have the benefit of being paid to do research. <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. you know, when you're getting paid to do research, you get to learn a lot really fast. You also get to find out that there's a lot of garbage yeah. um, really fast. Yeah. And so um, we're, we're, it's literally our job. Um, and so we're looking every week, mm -hmm. but in our own personal business and in the software company, you know, I would say our change is more quarterly. Like AI probably took us mm -hmm. maybe four months to really say, hey, this mm -hmm. can really help us in our QA process. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that for me and our group, we're challenging ourselves to take a step back and really ask, what do I want to accomplish for the coming year? What's important to me? How much time with family, how much time for self, how much time for business, because things are moving so quickly and rapidly that I think we have to be very clear about what our goals are and what we want to accomplish before we just take off running, right? And I think once you're very clear and concise about that and your mindset is where it needs to be, then it's taking these tools of AI and plugging them in and helping them accomplish what you see as your overall net value. How can that help you with support? So same with Gretchen, I think we are constantly evolving, we're constantly changing. We're also really trying to not run after every single mm -hmm. shiny new thing. Yeah. That <laughs> oh my God, that's what I exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're all guilty, yeah. right? Yeah, and for sure. Because then that's called distraction. Yeah. That's, right. that's not called evolving. And so for us, it's about really ensuring that we understand that we're here to serve and what that looks like. And then plugging in those things yeah. are gonna help yeah. us do it in an efficient way. And I'm going to be back on a panel, not next one, but the one after, <laughs> talking about technology from the Paragon point of view. So what we're going to be doing from technology from the MLS standpoint. Um, so I won't you know, divulge all of that right up front. Um, but for me personally, when you said that, the thing that automatically came to mind is I'm going to change all my passwords. Yeah. Um, security really mm -hmm. should be top of mind. We talk about security like it's this big kind of, you know, thing out there, but it impacts us all personally yes, on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. And we really should be, yeah. you know, definitely concerned about it because we see as a technology providers that we, our systems are always under attack. Your bank is under attack every single second of every day. Your MLS system is under attack. The systems that are in place to prevent those are attacks, you know, that's what we do as a business. Um, but personally, we should also yeah. always yeah. keep that front of mind. Totally agree. Uh, one thing I did do uh, in, this year was every opportunity that I had for a web-based solution, I switched to one-time passwords, right? It's so yeah. easy to get them on your cell phone. In fact, I've been that obnoxious consumer that calls and asks the software, the Chase Bank, why they make me put in my password still, even though mm -hmm. I've selected a one-time password, right? Mm -hmm. But those are sort of really easy things that I yeah. think I've, I've been fortunate I've never had um, compromised, but I also come from a security background where I think I'm paranoid. I think of these things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do encourage you to think more, to Lucy's point, change your passwords, um, use one-time password where you can, um, you know, be read the aware. disclosures, read the fine print. Yeah. <laughs> Beware when you're clicking on a link, yeah. right? There's so many phishing scams. I think I get, you know, sort of as many, you know, phishing scams as I do legit email in my mm -hmm. Gmail. So if you try to reach me at my Gmail, it may or may not arrive to me because, you know, it's sort of even Google's not that great at filtering out some of these sophisticated yeah. solutions. Well, I so much appreciate all of you joining me on stage on this panel. I hope that you all, I hope that you all have a great time. The rest of PropTech South, we have awesome speakers lined up. So please give a hand for Lucy, Chanel, Amy, and Gretchen. Thanks. For Thanks. Having me. Thank you.